So in this video, we're going to focus on three CSS selectors. Those are element, ID, and class. So there are way more options for selecting elements. We're going to learn about them later. Um, we're just going to focus on these three to start. And when I say selector, think back to this general rule that we talked about early on um, when we started CSS a few videos ago, where we have a selector, and then curly braces, and then some properties. So we're going to see a few different selectors that we can put right here. And the way that we're going to do that, um, we're actually going to build a really simple to-do list together. So I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to call it to-do list.html. Once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and add the HTML. And the way that it's going to work, it's going to be an H1. And then we're going to have a UL with LIs. But in each LI, we're going to have some text. And we're going to have a little checkbox. So see if you can remember how to do a checkbox. It's input type equals checkbox. And then below that, or after that, we'll have our text. So we'll have um, walk rusty. Then I'm just going to duplicate this. So then we'll have three of them here. Um, walk rusty. Let's do buy groceries. And then lastly, finish recording CSS videos. So if we open this up in a browser, we're going to see a bland and unstyled version of our final product. But the skeleton is there. We have our to-dos, and each one has a little checkbox next to it. OK. So the next thing that we want to do is connect a style sheet. So to do that, this time, let's start by connecting a non-existing style sheet. And then we'll go ahead and create the style sheet. So some people would call this error-driven development, where we write something that we know won't work and then we make it work afterwards. So I'm going to call this todo.css, or todos.css, which doesn't exist. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make that file, todos.css. And this does need to be in the same place as to do list.html. Save that. And just to make sure that it's connected, let's do something like body, background, orange. Just and you know, this is actually what I was talking about um, in the color video. This is one of the only times I would really use a color like orange. Uh, aside from teaching, um, I would just use it to make sure something is connected. I just want a bright color. I want to see if this to do.css is being referenced correctly here. So if we refresh, OK, great, things are connected. So what we're going to do um, is go back to the slides here and talk about the element selector first, which is the one that we've actually devoted uh, a lot of time to already. It's basically uh, the type of a tag. So you, s you specify div or paragraph or body, and then it will select all corresponding elements, all instances that match that. So in this instance, we have two divs, and each div has two paragraphs. And so we set all divs to have background purple. We get two purple divs. We set all paragraph to be color yellow. We get four yellow paragraphs. So that's what we're doing here when we select the body. We could also do it for all LIs and give them a border. Or let's, sure, border of two pixels, solid, red. And of course, that works on all LIs. OK, so the next thing that we might want to do is single out one li or one h1 or one instance of something so in this example we're selecting the third li and turning it yellow and the way that we do that is actually by altering the html slightly and then using a hook that we add to the html in our css we'll refer back to it and turn it yellow so the first step is to add that hook which is called an id and so the way that an id works you add it as an attribute to any element, ID equals, and then in quotes, any name that you want. It can be anything. And then what we do is refer to that later 
by writing octothorpe or hash sign and then the name of the ID. And that will select the one element that matches that ID name. So as an example, let's say that I want this uh, final li here to look slightly different. What I could do is go here, li, and let's give it an ID. And this can be any name at all. Let's just call this special. And the reason I'm saying uh, I'm calling it special, it's not really a great name, but it does show you that the, the point of using an ID is to single something out. It is a way to um, target one individual element. And one note about an ID, it can only appear on a page one time. So if I do this, and I try and give the ID special to two elements, that's actually invalid HTML. So it's only supposed to be there one time on the page, it's purely used to single a single element out. We can, however, have multiple IDs on a page as long as they don't appear more than once. Okay, so let's go with this special. Now let's make this, um, let's take a look at it here. It's this last one here. Let's give it a background color. So to do that, ID, the name is special. We go to our CSS file and we write special and we put an octothorpe in front of it. And that just tells CSS that we're talking about an ID. So then all we do is write our CSS in here. So let's do background color and let's make it yellow. Save the file, refresh, and you can see only this one is yellow. So there's a few things I wanna point out. The first is that this code is still working. It turns all LIs, um, it gives them a red border, including this one, the final one. And then we're adding on top of that by adding a yellow background only to the last one based off of this hook that we added in um, called an ID. So to sum up, an ID is a way to single out an element. Um, you can only use an ID once per page, but we can have as many IDs as we want on a page. So IDs are great to single out individual elements but oftentimes we wanna have multiple elements that look similar, um, but we don't want all LIs, for instance. So let's say I wanted to style half of the LIs one way and half of them another way. We could use a class to achieve that. So the way that a class works, it's just like an ID, except it's called a class, and we can apply it to any number of elements on a page. So as you can see here, we're um, applying a class called highlight to the first paragraph in the third paragraph, and then we refer to it in our CSS with a dot instead of an octothorpe. So again, to contrast that, here to select an ID, we use the hash sign or the octothorpe. Here to select a class, we use dot. Otherwise, they work the same way. So let's uh, do an example. I'm gonna add a class, and the way that I want this to work, um, we're gonna pretend that these two are checked off. So I want there to be um, a line through the text. So when we look at buy groceries and walk rusty, there should be a strike through going through this text, but not the last one. So the way that we do that, or one way to do that is with a class. So on the LI, I'm gonna go ahead and add a class and we're just gonna call this completed. And another one, class equals completed. And I'm gonna save that and if I refresh, nothing happens because I don't have any styles. So now I go to my CSS and I write dot and then the name of the class, completed, curly braces, and now a style. So I'm gonna introduce something new here, which is called text decoration. And text decoration is a way to add line through, but there are a few things that you can do. You can add an underline and you can add a wavy underline apparently, I didn't know that, um, a line through and an overline, which is just like an underline except on top. So we're gonna use line through and that should be it. So if I refresh, keep your eye on these top two, we now get a line through. Great. Uh, one quick note while I'm here, is that if I want these checkboxes to be checked when the page loads, so right now they're not checked and I have to manually check them, 
But if I want the top two to be checked, I can go here and add in an attribute called checked. And this works on checkbox inputs. So by doing that, if I refresh, now when the page loads, they're checked. So that's not really CSS, but it's uh, important just to know that you can do that. Okay, so let's wrap this up really quickly. We have the element selector to select all of a given in, um, element, all LIs, all divs, all paragraphs. We have the ID selector, which will select the one element with a matching ID. And we always need to use an octothorpe for that, or a hash symbol. And then we have the class selector, which is very similar to the ID selector, except that we select based off of a class name. And a class can occur as many times as we want on a given page, unlike an ID, which is only once.